Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever and however you are listening or watching. And welcome to the Valley Life Podcast, where we're taking theology from the classroom to the living room, storeroom, stockroom, showroom, workroom, weight room, and water closet. Wherever you get your podcasts or wherever you watch your videos, we want to be there, bringing good theology to the people. Mm. My name is Vinny Hanke, lead pastor of Valley Life Community Church. Joining me in studio today is the man, the myth, the legend... The angler, Mr. Brandon Lockridge. Hey, buddy. Hello. You looked at my hat. You I did look at angler. your hat. Okay. I needed, I needed <laughs> an adjective, and I looked at squarely at your hat. <laughs> and you can't see it on camera, maybe because you're far away, unless you got super high definition. But uh, Brandon's got fish on his hat. Well, that that is the new iPhone 15 Pro that you're recording on right there. Thanks so for they, putting my business out on Front Street, but yeah, it is. They, they might be able to see it. My point is it's the camera's so good. That's true. Right? Yeah. It, it, they might be able to see it. Yeah. So. Brought to you by Apple. You're welcome. You're welcome. No, I'm Free advertisement, yeah. as if you needed it. I do not. No, <laughs> the viewers can see it. We're all, yeah, I got, I got bit early. Anyway, hey, we're in a series called... <laughs> I was going to say, what are we doing? Ask an Elder, where uh, in our desire to help the local church understand why we do the things that we do, or perhaps explain a little history and background to the things that we say, uh, I want to get in studio with Brandon and just allow him to, uh, man, share the plethora of information that he has uh, for the local church. Because again, we want good theologians uh, in the church and out in the world. So we're going to continue in that series, maybe the final episode for a while today. We're going to change it up and do something different. But for the final episode, let us begin. Let us. Hey, Brandon. Yes, sir. You're an elder. I am. What is is or what are the creeds, confessions, and catechism I hear so much about? Yeah. So if you'll remember in the last episode, I left everyone with a cliffhanger on this one, you right? Did. We were talking about what is Reformed theology. Yep. And the last thing I said <clears throat> is that Reformed theology is confessional. I'm going to interrupt this because you used a phrase there that might be a cultural colloquialism that doesn't exist anymore. Use the phrase cliffhanger. Oh man! And in the in in the uh, universe of streaming, that's not really a thing anymore. True. So, kids out there, a cliffhanger back before streaming, when you were watching a television show, at the very end of the of the of a season, the very last episode, some dramatic thing would happen that would be unresolved in a character or in a circumstance. And you had to wait months and months and months for it to be resolved and reconciled at the beginning of season two. Yeah. And some of those may have been a main character was in danger, like he was hanging from a cliff. And mm-hmm. so you're left all summer wondering, is he going to make it or not? Mm-hmm. But that's not really a thing anymore, because I just wait no. five seconds, and then Netflix rolls me over, and I find out my favorite character did survive or didn't right. survive. Right. Well, some of the some of these streamers are getting wise to that, and they are starting to release one episode, one episode a, week. a week. And that's you know, thankfully, you're only left hanging for a week that's in true. this in this episode, right? That's and legit. so you know, here you go. A week later, we're continuing cliffhanger. By the way, they should watch the movie cliffhanger. They should right? watch the with movie cliffhanger with Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. Right. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Man, we are way down the rabbit hole now. It's all right. So <laughs> here we go. Here's, a, here's the next so, opportunity to so, use the word digress. Thus I digress. Thus I digress. Yeah. And return us dig- back to, hey, Brandon, Yeah. what are creeds, confessions, and catechisms? Okay. So the last thing I left us with at the end of last episode was I said that um, creeds, Confessions and catechisms are all documents that give expression to our conviction. So, and I said everybody has these, right? And and that's true. Every denomination, every church, every individual Christian has has these in some form or another. Right. Right. You you go into any church, or you you look on a church's website and you'll find that the church believes some things about some things, right? In our modern day, we call these statements of faith, Yep. right? So every church has a statement of faith. Well, that's just a confession. You're saying, I believe X about X, right? Yep. um, Anytime you as a Christian, you say, I believe in Jesus Christ as my my Lord and Savior, right? My... There, that's a confession. Right. Yep. Okay. So the question is not whether you have a confession or not. 
the question is, what truths do you confess? Exactly, exactly. And so um, now we we have these in these formal confessions and creeds and catechisms in our Reformed tradition that we've had since the time of the Reformation. And there was a lot of these that came out of the Reformation. And I admit, the Brandon from 15 years ago would have been like, this is bogus. We, I don't need this, right? I don't, I don't need any. These are old. They're outdated. It's, it's focusing too much on tradition, yeah, and you know because I'm a good Protestant, like I'm I'm gonna protest all that Roman Catholic tradition, and yeah, we don't we don't need any. I of get that, that right? feedback all the time for right? folks who have questions because these these documents or when we refer to these, it creates it creates a little bit of a crisis moment because their only frame of reference is the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah, indeed, and really that was kind of the movement of the of fundamentalism in America, actually. So that just good book uh, by George Marsden. Uh, I believe it's called Fundamentalism in America. Anyways, fantastic book. But this, the rise of fun- fundamentalism said, we are getting rid of all this old tradition stuff. We don't need all of this. The creeds, confessions, catechisms, we're all included in that. This is, this is outdated, old. We don't want to get stuck in tradition. And it came out of, I think, a a genuine heart for just wanting to be good Jesus followers. And we don't want tradition to bog us down. But unfortunately, what happened is that a lot of things were forgotten in that era, that uh, things that were good uh, that came out of church history and tradition. So tradition is actually a wonderful thing if we understand it in light of scripture. If, if we're just following tr- tradition for tradition's sake, that's where it becomes dangerous. And that's what, that's the, the error that the Roman Catholic church fell into. And so, um, when we say things like no creed, but Christ, which was something that was coming out of that fundamental movement, we're actually professing a creed, right? Right. We're yeah. actually making a commitment, a statement of faith exactly. that we've committed ourselves right. to. So creeds and confessions are not bad things. We all have them and that's fine. Um, but what is, what is their intention and are they, are they faithful to the gospel? So maybe let's take these one at a time for the listener and the viewer so they can mm-hmm. maybe take some notes or, or kind of dial these in. So what is a creed? Yeah. So starting with creeds, creeds are typically shorter in nature, uh, maybe a handful of paragraphs long. And these creeds typically deal with core foundational Christian doctrines, right? Christian issues that, that all Christians of all backgrounds should be able to subscribe to. For example, like the doctrine of the Trinity or mm-hmm. the, the person of Christ. Right. Right. These big capital C church things right. that we all adhere to. Right. So you had like your, some examples would be like your Apostles Creed and your Nicene Creed. We're kind of dealing with some, you know, foundational theology proper stuff, right? The nature of God yep. type stuff. Uh, the, the Athanasian Creed would have been dealing with matters of the Trinity, yep. right? And so these are core. So we, so those three documents right there, for example, we should, at, at all Christians of all backgrounds, even if you're saying, well, I'm not Reformed. Okay, but you should still be able to look at those three creeds, read them, and say, yes, 100% yep. that's true. Yep. All right. Okay. Foundational stuff. What is a confession then? Okay. So confessions typically go into much greater detail, much greater depth. Uh, some of the main ones have over 30 chapters or articles, and all of those... Uh, chapters or articles having multiple paragraphs in them. Um, uh, These are meant to be very detailed, covering um, uh, doctrine with more of a systematic approach. So in the last episode, we mentioned kind of the systematic theology versus biblical theology. So typically, the Reformed confessions were, were pretty systematic in nature. So they were covering things like theology proper, who is God? What are the attributes of God? Who is man in light of who God is? 
what is, you know, soteri- soteriology, Christ, you know, so things of sal- matters of salvation, uh, Christology, matters of Christ, who is Jesus, pneumatology, who is the Holy Spirit, right? Yep. So they're, so they're going into to some pretty big depth uh, yep. on this stuff. Are there some examples of uh, our Reformed or main Reformed mm-hmm. confessions our listeners and viewers might like to read or, or you would refer them to? Yeah, yeah. So um, some big ones that came out of the time of the Reformation would be the Belgic Confession, which we here at Valley Life uh, subscribe to, uh, the Westminster Confession, which is very Presbyterian in nature. So a lot of your uh, PCA churches would use these. Uh, with OPC, right? A lot of those uh, denominations would be using the, the Westminster. Uh, and then uh, for our Baptist brothers, the Second London Baptist Confession, a lot of uh, big, big, big resurgence over the past probably 10 years, I would say, a big resurgence within the Reformed Baptist movement and the, the one that they would hold to would be this, the 1689 London Baptist Confession. Okay. Uh, how about this? What is a catechism? Like that's just an odd word for yeah. for us. We don't use it yeah. very often. Uh, what, what's a catechism? Yeah. So first, most people hearing catechism probably will immediately think Roman Catholic Church. Yep. And they'll be like, okay, you guys are sitting here this whole time saying we are not Roman Catholic. And then here you got your, your it's like. And then you use that word. Yeah. It's like. Um, you know, the hook, line, and sinker yeah. analogy or the uh, you feel, you're kind of feeling bamboozled right now. Yeah, you're we like, totally got you in. Man, you guys really got me listening. And then here comes this catechism stuff. What in the Bait world is switch. going on? Yeah. Yep, there we go. Bait and switch. So before you turn the channel, before you turn this off, let me explain, okay? Catechisms are a good thing. They have a purpose and they are extremely biblical, and I'm going to explain to you why. Okay. Catechisms are typically meant for purposes of training and equipping. Okay. Think of when you go to um, an adult Bible study class, right? There's a lot of churches that have adult Bible study classes. Yeah. You go to an adult Bible study class, and what are you doing in that adult Bible study class? You are being trained and equipped, Right, you're learning things yep. about doctrine. Okay, well, this is the the intention of a catechism, and most specifically, catechisms were intended as a tool for teaching young people. Okay, so when as you raise your children up in your home, right, parents, think of you're teaching your kids, yep. and you're teaching kids things about God. You know what you're doing when you do that? You're catechizing, catechizing them. Yes. And I know it's like, oh, but I don't like that word, but it's, it's okay. It's, it's a good it's, word. It's a good word. It's yeah. a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so catechisms are typically done in a question and answer format. Okay. So when teaching children, for example, you would ask them the catechism question and they would respond back with the answer from the catechism that corresponds with that question. And all these questions and answers are covering biblical doctrine as they are found in the scriptures. So there's always scripture references that go along uh, with these answers. And so it ends up being a very, very effective way for us to train our children in the way of the Lord. But Brandon, isn't that just rote memorization? I mean, aren't we just creating little robots who, yeah, maybe they just repeat? I mean, surely there's no biblical evidence (laughs) for this idea of teaching doctrine to our children. Yes. Yeah. Well... Um, let me start off by saying it, it can be that for sure. Right. And this was the criticism of the Roman Catholic church is like, is it can just be rote exercise, but there actually is a commandment in scripture for us to do this thing. What is it? Okay. Deuteronomy chapter six, verses six and seven says this. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. On your heart. Let's keep that in mind. Not just in my brain. Yeah, exactly. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Okay, so let's get back to what we were saying about this idea of it being rote. Okay, so if my intention is to just 
pound knowledge into my children, you know, and it's like, hey, on this day at this time, we're going to do some catechizing and I'm going to beat this stuff into your brain and you're going to learn this stuff and you're going to know it. Well, then catechizing is of little use. But what's being done in Deuteronomy here? She'll teach them diligently. So first of all, a command that she'll be on your heart. Okay, so we're not looking for just a brain exercise. We're looking for the heart. And then look what it says. You shall teach them diligently to, to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise. In other words, these are things that cover all of life. You are doing life in the scriptures, yep. right? And this is the intention of the catechism. It's not just, I'm going to beat this into you once a week at a specific time, you know, on Sunday after church or whatever that may be, right? You're walking through life in the scriptures and the catechisms are helping us do that because, you know, like for example, there's some wonderful, um, helps out there that you read a, a, a catechism question, uh, maybe on the Lord's day and then for the rest of the week, you're talking about what you've learned, yep. right? And so the intention is to uh, to win over the heart, not not the brain, yep. right? Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, final thoughts about creeds, confessions, and catechisms. Yeah, so finally, I just want to, like, um, well, actually, so to go back to the catechisms for a quick second, just because I want to provide some uh, examples of, of some mainline reform catechisms. Oh, yes. yep. um, so we, as I said, we believe that uh, the catechisms uh, help us do this uh, in training uh, our children and young believers in the way of the Lord. And I would say that the Heidelberg Catechism, which is the one that we used uh, in our reform tradition here at Valley Life, um, excellent catechism, and uh, also the Westminster shorter and larger catechisms are are both uh, really good as well. And um, yeah, for final thoughts, I would say just we we believe that that these creeds and these confessions and catechisms are important. Um, and I always like to say this every single time because I, I I don't ever want somebody to misunderstand what we're saying about uh, these documents. Um, we believe that they, th th or excuse me, we do not believe that they are greater than or even equal with Scripture, right? We believe that they are a helpful aid because they are faithful, they, they are a faithful summarization of the doctrines that are contained within Scripture. So when we look at these creeds, these catechisms, these confessions, we can look at them and we can go to the scripture references. We can see that everything that they are teaching is in scripture and they're, they're summarized in a way that is helpful for our learning. And, um, I would say also that, um, this memorization of these doctrines and the way that they, these confessions and creeds and catechisms are laid out, they also help with the assurance of our faith and they will also help with being, you know, um, uh, knowing what we believe and why we believe it so that we might accurately defend our faith against those who might attack it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, if you've got questions about the creeds, confessions, or catechisms, or you think there's something uh, Brandon and I have left out in our series, Ask an Elder, we'd love to hear from you. You can send us an email, info at vlccidaho.org, and we will get that into the mixtape. Uh, for now, thank you for listening and watching the Valley Life podcast. And as always, God bless you.